good afternoon or good evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cycle, and this is Let's Play Train Simulator, and um, yeah, we got another new route here, guys. This uh, looked very interesting. We have the Glasgow Subway. Uh, this was apparently a, uh, an offshoot. Like When Thompson uh, Interactive became Ribbit Games, not everyone moved over to Ribbit Games, especially the owner of Thompson Interactive, who uh, apparently developed this in his spare time, I'm told. Uh, during the quarantine period and apparently it turned into a really nice project and he wanted to um, make it available for all of us so uh, here we have it available for all of us and this is the Glasgow subway uh, we have a seven scenario set here I don't know if we're gonna do them all in this series or not but we are definitely gonna do these two tutorials today so the first one is tutorial on basic train controls enabling the ATO system the second is tut tutorial explaining how to switch from that to manual driving mode and exit that system. And then we're gonna have a series of five snares, which I don't know yet if they have any specific order. I will look this up later. But uh, as you can see, Shunting Shuffle has a five uh, bar difficulty. And uh, we have the Outer Circle Manual Mode Challenge at a four bar difficulty. I don't know if they're actually that difficult, uh, but everything is considered three bar difficult here. So this is apparently a very challenging route to uh, play. I uh, ignore the Gotthard band down here as well, obviously. That's not related to what we're doing here today. Uh, the thing just isn't big enough to fill one screen. But anyway, um, I'll put, we can fix that later. And anyway, in case all the uh, trains here are the, um, it's just one train. It's all one train. There's no other trains on this. The Glasgow Subway 1980DM. So that's the train we're going to be using for all of these scenarios. And um, I'm going to be curious in the future to see what people do on the scene workshop with these scenarios, with this uh, route, I should say, not with scenarios, but with the route. So we're going to find out in the future what that is, and I am very curious to see what uh, ideas people come up with. But the network, by the way, goes through Partick Station, which is very synonymous with my channel because I kept calling it Patrick Station when I was doing the suburban Glasgow route. Uh, I should be pointed out that this is a connecting station to the uh, North Clyde line. This is not actually the North Clyde line itself. This is an underground segment of it and it goes through a whole different set of stations so you're not going to see any of the north clyde line here we might be able to take a look outside if we go by par ticket sometime but uh, i don't think it's going to be recreated the same way as the uh suburban glasgow dlc at all in fact i can assure you it probably isn't if we can even go above ground let's assume we can't go above ground for now until we actually get into the scenarios and we'll find out later in any case uh tutorial number one let's get started on our basic train controls let's see how this works good morning let me explain how the main controls of this subway train operate. I will explain each control in turn, and at the end I will provide you with a checklist to complete before we depart from the depot. It is essential that you also read the PDF product manual provided in your Steam folder. Location provided. Close this window to begin. Uh, I did take a look at the manual, and I forgot to put it on my iPad before we actually started this, so I'm going to have to do that before we do the other uh, scenarios, just to make sure. I'm getting a constant clothes box on my mouse here that's not fun yeah it just keeps coming up on front cab door for some reason so uh yeah apparently if you keep your mouse hovered over the uh, cab here you're going to keep getting alerts as to what you have here so it's kind of interesting apparently you can open the cab door i don't know uh, but in any case let's close this box we'll begin of course we're going to get i'm not even going to turn the hut on right now there's no point uh the reverser has two main functions it selects the direction of travel and also enables or disables ATO. So it has an extra notch on it. When driving this route, you cannot use the HUD reverser. It is for information only. So uh, that is... Uh, well, it's going to be different. Off should be selected before leaving the cabin and also selected to reset after an, emer an automatic emergency brake application. That makes sense. A is for forward reverse or forward travel using ATO operation. This can only be selected when an auto permit is available, as demonstrated later. This is going to be complicated, isn't it? F is for forward travel in manual operation. N is for neutral. R is for reverse travel in manual operation, limited to 18 kilometers per hour, apparently. So uh, I guess your speed limit is just automatically dropped when you're in reverse. I don't know. Um, oh, there's more information here, too. No, there isn't. Close this window and continue. Okay, the scroll bar threw me off. It did say close this window and continue. So, uh, yeah, this reverser is different. You have the A, F, N, and R, and the reverser on the HUD will not show you any of this. We'll look at that later. 
Now all the way over here, the parking brakes are applied and released using two of the push button controls on the right hand side of the cab and they should be applied while you are changing cabins. We will release the parking brakes now as we are in the cabin. Close this window, continue. Apparently they released them for us. The saloon lights in the passenger areas of the train are also switched on and off using two of the push button controls on the right hand side of the cabin. You need to switch the saloon lights on before opening the passenger doors at our first stop. Okay, so let's find the button for that. Um, that's the main on, main off. Saloon lights off, saloon lights on. So basically we'd be pushing this button to turn them on, this button to turn them off. Uh, and then we have an auto start function here as well. It looks like he's put all of the buttons in here. I'm actually very impressed with pretty much almost all the buttons, except for that one. That one in the middle, at the bottom doesn't work very well, but, um, and the ones on the right don't, oh, the one, okay, the auto start is over on the right as well, but nothing else on the right seems to function. So all the ones on the left side do function, all the ones on the right side apparently do not, except for the auto start, and that's about it. So, uh, there you go. The headlight and taillight switches provide three options. The two, two red lights at each end of the train when parking the depot. Uh, and dim headlights with rear red tail lights for yard only operations. Hmm. Full headlights with rear red tail lights must be used for tunnel operations. Hmm. Well, this, it looks like the lights are not going to be an easy on off configuration. We're not going to be able to just push H to turn on the various settings. We're going to have to actually push the switches to turn these headlights on. We're probably, I don't know if this scenario will grade us for not doing it, but um, yeah, we should be doing it if we want to be realistic. So there you go. It is essential that you can see your instruments clearly while driving. Always switch on your instrument lights before setting off. The dimmer switch provides two levels of illumination. I believe you just push I to do that. I'll try to do that quickly. There you go. The cab light switch has three positions, off, dim, and on. It is recommended that you have the cabin lights set to dim to enable you to navigate around the train controls while driving in the tunnels or at night. Okay. The combined throttle brake lever is divided into two zones. The upper half provides three power settings, shunt, series, and parallel. The throttle zone controls how much power is provided to the ATO system and the lever should always be positioned fully forward at P after selecting A. Hmm. on the reverser for auto mode. Well then, um, okay. Train speed is automatically limited in both manual and auto driving modes as shown by the white indicator lamps. And you can see those in the second picture on the left. The braking zone, as you can predict, is used when driving in manual mode and is graduated from off in full application to full application. There is also an emergency notch beyond full application that will trigger emergency auto braking. Nothing unusual with that. When using auto driving mode, ATO, the train will automatically navigate to the next station platform when the auto start button is pressed. Auto start will not function if you are not in auto driving mode. The passenger doors are open or the departure signal is at danger. So basically, you don't even have to think. You push a button and the train will take you where you need to go, if you are allowed to go. That is very interesting. Very, very interesting. Hmm. That is, I'm gonna be curious how that works. When using auto driving mode, ATO, the auto early lamp will illuminate to indicate that the next departure signal is currently at danger. You can only press the auto start buttons when this lamp has gone off and the line ahead is clear. I disagree with that. You can push the button any time, it just would not be advised to do so. Moving on. All trains must be driven in manual mode from the depot to the first station at Govan or Ibrox. Then again in manual mode when exiting the circles to return to the depot. Make sense? 
Now set up your cabin as follows before proceeding to depot line 1 where we will reverse the train. Move the reverser to F to select forward in manual mode. We should probably be getting these messages uh, in a different way so we can do these steps one at a time rather than have to memorize all this but in the first go, but okay. So move the reverser to F to select forward in manual mode. Set your headlights to full. Yep, that's easy. Turn on your instrument lights. That's already done. Set your cabin lights to dim. I have to remember how to do that. Turn on the saloon lights. I know where that is. Close this window before you follow these instructions. That's genius, isn't it? I'm gonna forget those instructions. Um, so um, I'll come back to the reverser in a second because that's the last thing I wanna figure out. But let's turn on the saloon lights very quickly. We'll set our cabin lights to dim if we can figure out how. Headlights turning on is easy. So I just remember to set the reverser. So the headlights are fully on. Saloon lights, as we might remember, are over here. They're now on. We're going to, um, what else? Set our things to dim. So these are cabin lights. Can we dim them? That's dim, apparently. This is off. Okay, we got that figured out. So that's dim. What are these? These are windscreen wipers. We don't need them right now, but they work. Yeah, if we're underground, we're not going to be using very much. Actually, this might not be underground now that I think about it. Anyway, let's try and figure out this reverser thing right now. Let's bring up the HUD to take a look. It's probably not going to tell us anything, but um, that's a break that we have 60% on. Okay. So the reverser is going to move to A. That should do the job, right? That should do the job. That's So there's the letter, A-F-N-R. There you go. Uh, let's take a quick look outside as well. We have our task list. We don't have any... We're not, we start with a thousand points. As long as we don't speed, we're good. Uh, we're basically learning. So we're going to stop at depot line one, which is up ahead in about half a kilometer. We're going to go to Govin Outer and then go to Partick Outer for pa passenger pickups. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. Let's uh, take a quick look at our train. This is what we're driving. We are at the depot. So obviously if we try to back up, we're going to derail ourselves because we're going to run into the garage. Now let's look at the route, by the way. This is what the route looks like. Just a circle. That's all it is. You have one depot over here. We're in it. We're in that one depot and that's it. So we have our little depot line and that's it. So we are located right here at the garage. And if we try to back up, we're going to uh, literally run through the garage. Like what is back here? You want to know what's back here? Let's take a look. Here's our chance to take a look. Inside 18, you have a garage. This may not surprise you. This may not surprise you at all. What is through the wall of the garage? A yard. This also may not surprise you. That's where we are. That's exactly where we are outside. And as you can see, nothing is modeled outside of this area. This is the only area that is modeled on the entire route. Because this is the only area you're expected to be outside. When we get down over to the depot line, we're going to eventually hit some uh, more buffers with red signals here. We're going to continue on here. And that's the end of that. So we're going to eventually find our way over here. I think it's over here and going underground from here, I believe. Aha! This is the underground path right here. We go in here, we go underground, and we are underground from then on. We can't even do anything underground. So that's how we're going to get underground right there, I believe. And we're going to start our journey right there. So here, so here's where we are right now. Here's where we're going. That's basically how this works. If you're above ground, you're into the yard. If you're underground, you're running the route. So that's basically how it works. Let's get back in the cab and uh, actually do something here, shall we? It'd be a pretty darn good idea right now. So let's uh, see if we can actually move forward now. Our speed limit is 18 kilometers per hour. You know what I didn't do? I didn't uh, move this to F, did I? There we go. Let's try it now. Oh yeah, that released everything. We're good to go now. We're good to go now, I think. Let's go to shunt. That's enough. <laughs> That's good enough. Actually, let's go a little faster.
So I'll turn that off. We don't need to keep this on anymore. I mean, we're, we can see looking... We're not, I'm not going to worry about setting up a certain cavity for this, right? Because we're just, just learning. But there's our point way up there. We can't even see it yet because it's around the corner. So that's what we're looking for. Let's look outside as we do this, actually. There's our underground... An underground entrance there. We're, uh, actually, I was looking at the wrong train. Our train's here. The train I was focusing on a moment ago was actually the one over there, which is not the right one for us. So we're in this one. So I showed you the wrong train earlier. My apologies for that. Gonna hide you. Because we can see on the HUD where it is we're going. We're going via depot line. By the way, there are multiple views here. You can go, uh, you can get a passenger view. Passenger view is tied to number one, believe it or not. So, and look at all the passenger views. Look at all the passenger views. Oh, you can spend time looking around this train. My goodness. What is on passenger view? Passenger view doesn't have anything to tie to it. The passenger views are just tied to option number one. So uh, basically they're move around the cab views. Uh, that's all they are. I'm surprised those three passenger views are not tied to option number five and I wonder why that is. Uh, very, very interesting. You would think they would be tied to option number five. We're going to be going on a depot line one. Is it this one or the next one? Take your bets. Place your bets. If you said this one, you win. So we're going to park ourselves fully within the orange because we're going to be prim and proper here. What is with that orange light? What was that? Oh, is that the stop signal? That's the stop signal in the other direction. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's uh, stop right here. This is a good idea. So we made it to our stop point. We're good to go. We're going to be reversing now. Or rather, we're going to be changing cabs. So we're going to get directions as to how to change cabs here. Let me go back to 60% because I guess that's appropriate. Well done. Let's pause here. Um, pause. Well done. Now return the reverser lever to off and apply the parking brakes. After that, move to the rear cabin of the train and drive manually to Govan, making sure the whole train is in the platform before opening the doors for passengers to board. Okay, so we're going to be going to Govan, uh, and we're going to be going underground, and that's going to be fun. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going underground. So we're going to apply the parking brakes. That's the one thing I have to remember how to do. And we'll go from there. So reverser off is easy once I unpause. Uh, parking brakes are over on that panel, I think. And um, yeah, then we're gonna change cabins. Okay, let's try it. Now I know we can move the reverser to off just by doing this. So there we go, reverser is off. So looking at this panel now, we moved over to this panel. Slew lights are already on, I believe. Parking brake is now on. There we go. Didn't want to go the first time. So I'm going to just return back to my central position. Let's go ahead and change cabs by doing no. That. We have our green light back to our minimal HUD. I'm going to set the reverser to forward and then to A. Do I go to neutral? Is that what I'm supposed to do? No. Well, there you go. This is kind of different, isn't it? If you move up, you go into reverse. If you move down, you go into forward. And then of course there's the uh, that's off completely off. So this is kind of a, kind of a different setup. You have to look at this reverser differently. So let's just pop, pop over the reverse for a second while we have a chance. Notice it's off right now. I'm pushing up to move it into. So I'm pushing pushing W basically on the keyboard. The keyboard is reversed here. I'm pushing W to move it into auto. Uh, up again to move it into forward, which you would expect. But then you have to push up to go into neutral and up to go into reverse. Then you go down to go in the other direction. So it's kind of going in opposite order than you're used to here. Very, very interesting. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Very, very interesting. Notice our speed limit on the train, by the way, is marked. I like that. So very, very interesting that that's set up like that. So we want to make sure this parking brake is off. Off, thank you. The saloon lights are on, so we're going to leave them on for now. Doors are locked, which is, you better hope they're locked. So moving ourselves back. Can we open this door, by the way? 
Are you able to open this door? Does this door open? You're kidding me. <laughs> oh, I like it. Let's close that thing. Let's close it if we can. I might have just mess this up, guys. Can I close it, please? Can I can I close it, please? I want to close it now. Well, now that I've unlocked it, I can't seem to get locked anymore. Oh, there. Nope, nope, nope. You were doing it. You're you're doing it. You're 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 you're. That'll have to work. I don't know how you're supposed to get that thing to center back down the center, but uh, apparently uh, I'm not doing it properly. Hope I get don't get penalized for moving with the doors open. Nope, I'm not. The door just stays there. I wonder if you can actually drive with the door open. That'd be kind of funny. That would be really funny. So, making our way to Govan Outer, which you can see now marked on the HUD. We are going to enter the subway system. We will be completely underground in just a moment. Now, it looks like the different stations are going to be marked and sceneried as outdoor areas. So, it looks like we're going to be marked outdoors in the various stations, which is very, very interesting. But for the meantime, let's get ready to say goodbye to our train as we're going underground. We're going to have to break here. Wow. Wow. You have to have like a 50% break just to come up. Just to avoid going over the speed limit. So here we go under the bridge. You can see the tunnel entrance up ahead. So we're going to be snapped back into the cab as soon as we... Well, this is messy. Let's just get in the cab. The downhill is ending. Now you could see that was obviously a very massive hill. Are right, headlights on on this side? They're not very good. Headlights are not very good here, but I guess that's a normal train. The headlights don't always work very well. So you can see the uh, subway lines themselves. We are now joining the subway lines. We should stop breaking down and actually get up to speed, so I'm doing that. So we're now in an overground segment, apparently, and now we're back underground. The hub makes this look very interesting, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm from Ontario, and I'm just imagining the TTC looking like this. You know? That's all I, all I can think about right now. The TTC in Toronto. We have a 55 section, but... We're shunting in, we're only starting out, so I'm gonna keep it low. We're gonna keep it low for right now. And uh, it looks like we're gonna have passengers standing still on these platforms. That is unfortunate. I'm sure there are reasons for it. I think I actually uh, read something about that, but uh, there are reasons I'm sure these passengers stand still. But it's going to make the whole idea of getting camera shots in this uh, DLC seem extremely pointless. I mean, let's pop outside for a second if we can. There we are. So if I were to push 8 and go around, well, what's the point of getting a camera shot if they're just going to be standing there posing as magazine models. There's no point getting camera shots in this uh, DLC without moving passengers. So I'm, just, I'm not going to waste my time trying to get people on camera here. There really is no point to it. Like he's just standing there in a permanent foot up pose. Try standing in that pose for a long period of time. That is, um, that would take talent doing that. Anyway, we are fully within the platform as you can see. I am going to go ahead and push the T to open the doors. We have a green behind us as well, by the way, which is very interesting. So doors are open. No one's going to actually get on. And if we look at the train itself, there's no one on the train. Nobody is on the train. Now, apparently, this is 
a thing feature that is randomized. So apparently, um, over regular scenarios, it will be randomized. But uh, for right now, we're seeing nobody. But this has completed our pasture pickup. We are going to move to probably the auto setup right now. So let's go ahead and get ready to do that. As an auto permit is now available, you should move the reverser to A to select ATO mode. Only after that is done, you need to push the throttle brake lever fully forward to notch P. When you are ready and the signal is clear, you may press an auto start button to begin. So let's do that. We're going to re reset this and move it to A. So auto permit is now on. So the throttle, if we want to remind ourselves, is this guy. We want to move it all the way up to P. So that is a reverser. I don't want to do that. Try that again. There we go. So move this all the way up to P. We're now in parallel. That's where we want to be, parallel. So now that we are in parallel, I can hop over to here. And according to uh, what I was just told, all I have to do is push the auto start, which is a little down here, auto start. I'm going to find what the shortcut button is for this, by the way. So auto start is this. Oh, brother. Let's see how this works, shall we? I want to remind you, I'm not doing anything to this train right now. I'm not doing anything to this train. It's slowed down to 54, 55 on its own. It is managing the speed on its own right now. I, I love this automatic driving thing. I love this. It's even slowing it down. I think it's going to actually stop us at, at Patrick Outer. I think it's going to. I mean, this is the easiest train driving operation you can have. Just sit there and push a button. Makes you wonder what the scenarios are going to be. It's slowing me down in everything. The speed limit is now 35. I didn't see it on the HUD, but it's there. I pro it's going to bring me to a stop before the red signal. Look at this. It's going to speed me up a little bit to get me to the signal. That's going to make me stop. Right before the red signal. All I have to do is sit here, push T, and open the doors. And uh, everyone is now going to board Partick, I think. Um, guys. Guys. Um, no. Um. Nicely modeled woman, but no move. Oh, look, people are on now. People are on the train. There are people on the train. Let's look outside to see what... Yep, there, there's Partick Station, ladies and gentlemen. That's the above-ground Partick. Yep, nothing is modeled here. We we're get, we break the realism by going above ground, so there you go. Well done, you have completed this tutorial successfully. Now try the second tutorial that explains exiting the system to the depot. I'm going to like this, guys. I think I'm going to like this. These scenarios might actually be fun. Let's uh, get to the screen, get our 1,000 points because we didn't really do anything to lose it. And we'll see tutorial number two. We're going to move straight into tutorial number two after this. Now, it should be noted I am playing a pre-release version of this. So if there is an achievement for this, I'm going to have to come back and reclaim it later because the achievements are not yet active for this route. So uh, I will have to make sure to come back and do that later myself. In the meantime, uh, we're going to move straight to tutorial number two. Let's go. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and changed the view so it's only the uh, 1980 uh, train here. You can see the train is now showing in the menu here. It's only the subway route selected now. Nothing else is on here. And I don't even know what would happen if you try to drive any other trains on here. I'm going to assume you can drive them, but they would just not model correctly. They wouldn't look right. Or maybe it's because the track is different than uh, what some of them can handle or most of them can handle, then they won't even work. But I don't know what would happen if you did that. But in any case, let's go ahead and get into the second tutorial here. Tutorial number two, we're going to return to the depot. Back to above ground. Good evening. Your train is already in auto drive mode, ATO, and we will continue in automatic until we are ready to return to the depot. Open the train doors now to allow passengers to board the train. Then press the auto start button to proceed to your next station stop at Ibrox. Close this window to begin. Okay. Uh, so Ibrox is where we're going to be going. Let's uh, board passengers. 
We do not have a time. Oh, we only have a timetable for this stop. This is the only stop that we actually have a timetable. We're going to go to Ibrox, and then we're going to make our way back above ground from Ibrox. That's what we're going to be doing here today. So I'm going to move over to the auto start button so we're ready to go. Aha, uh -huh, there's our buttons. Uh, that reminds me, are our cab lights dimmed? Let's go check that. Cab lights are dimmed. Um, they were. Oh, that's on. That's dim. That's what I want to see. What is that button? Volts. Okay, we'll take a better look at the uh, all the various buttons on here in later time. I like pushing buttons. I'm gonna break something if I if you give me too many buttons to push. But I like pushing buttons. There's another train going by, by the way. We can't really see it very well, but um, let's try this. Hello. Hello. Ding, 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 ding. Well done. I only opened the doors. Now press the auto start button to proceed to Ibrox. Okay. Uh, auto start. Ching. Ah, beautiful. Now a quick look at the uh, subway map. There's only one train on the route besides us today. So very, very quiet subway here today. And we're right here making our way up to Ibrox right here. We're going to eventually make our way to the depot. Leaving this way. That's what we're going to be doing. And again, we don't need to manage our speed at all. The game takes care of it for us. You can see Depot Line 1 is highlighted on the HUD, so we are going to be heading right in that direction. And we have no other option. We're not going to be going straight along the route because we're not allowed to. So it looks like the game, uh, the scripting in the uh, scenario will have to tell us whether we have an auto permit or not to allow us to go to the next station or not. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Telling pastors, get out of my house. I love it. So doors are now open. And then we're going to make a way. So we're going to have to turn our reverser on to uh, forward again. And we're going to have to shunt our way out. That's what I'm taking this to mean. Uh, the only problem is the speed limits are not provided in any fashion here so um, we're gonna have to keep ourselves at a shunt speed and uh, make our way out a little more carefully because I don't want to uh, you know speed and lose my job on the first day we no longer have a valid auto permit as we are returning to the depot you must now return train operation to manual mode done first move the throttle lever brake lever back to the full that's not what I want to do no 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 that was the uh, wrong button. That was the wrong button. Go to shunt, please. I almost screwed it up immediately. Okay, I pushed the uh, throttle instead of the reverser, and that screwed me up. I don't know if the rest of the... If I did everything else I should have there, but I got distracted. I had to stop reading that. So there you go. I got distracted by that. You can go back and read the rest of that. I'm going to have to go back and read the rest of that myself later on to see if I did anything wrong. We're going to park ourselves at 18 here because we're going to be leaving the underground layer of the subway. Now, I guess you could actually take the, um, throw, I guess the signal might mark the end of the speed limit at 55, so you're going to have to lower yourself back to 18 by that signal, I'm guessing. Uh, and I'm, if, the, uh, if the depot is utilized in a career scenario for going back to the depot, we might have to actually go back and, um, we might actually have a timetable getting back to the depot or leaving the depot, so we might actually have to modify our speed to a certain level here. We are at 18 though. I think it was a little before the signal. I'll review the video on that to find out. I think it was just a little bit before the signal that it went in. So we're going to lose a lot of speed on this uphill. We're going to have to put some throttle on as we leave the uh, subway. 
So we are going to have to eventually throttle up. Here's one more tunnel that we're going to take as we turn over to the left. We're entering the gradient now, so I'm applying some shunt power again. Shunt provides enough power, it looks like, to climb this hill. Fantastic. Fantastic. Trees, they do exist. Okay, I'm going at a good enough speed for this purpose. So we're going to pull ourselves into the deep pull and then we're going to be told to park it in no uncertain terms. So we're going to start applying some brakes here. 30% brakes for now. Let's move it up to 40, 50, 60. We're gonna get ourselves fully in the orange just in case we need to do that. We're not gonna continue all the way to the, um, now it's telling us where the three car stop is. So we can stop right here. I don't know if there's a, anything further ahead for a four car stop, but it looks like it's just a three car stop. So backing up, like I said, two car stop and there's no one car stop. So if you have two cars, you stop here. If you have three cars, you stop here. I went close enough. I'm close enough. So we're gonna get ourselves cleared to go back in a second. We'll look at that in a moment. For right now, let's move the reverser to off. Don't push the throttle this time, that'd be stupid. Uh, 60%. Apply the parking brakes. After that, move to the rear cabin and drive mainly to the depot. We're parking inside the depot shed after going through the train wash. Ooh, we're going to get train wash, guys. We're going to get train wash. Oh, let's turn the uh, saloon lights off, by the way. We should probably do that. Saloon lights can uh, go off. And if we go back to the passenger cabin, we can see that the saloon lights are indeed off. There you go. We confirm the saloon lights are off. Parking brake is going to be on. So that is now on. And uh, let's change cabs, shall we? I think we turned the, yeah, we turned the reverser off. Let's go back to the um, back cab. We have our shunt signal. So it is a red signal, but we have the shunt. That means we are clear to go. Let's uh, go. After we go into a forward position. Oh, we have to remove the parking brake. Let's uh, make sure the parking brake is off, shall we? Uh, parking brake is off. And we don't need to really do anything else except turn the headlights on. Remember the first tutorial they said minimal setting? That's a minimal setting right there. This is the high end setting. This is the minimal setting. So let's move forward and get our, oops. I just went into reverse. That'd be bad. So back to forward, let's get into shunt. And let's pop a look at the signal for a second. Notice the shunt signal disappeared. So that means we're now taking the shunt that we were given. So we're now leaving the line where we go underground. Depot line 14 is already set for us. I'm, I would be curious if these are actually all automated. Are there actually manual switches here? I'm gonna make sure there's no uh, signal block. This. We should be clear. But I'm gonna make sure that we still have a shunt signal. Looks like we do. Uh, is anything manual in this yard? Nothing. There is a manual switch up here, but that's it. There's some kind of manual switch and that's it. Uh, I don't know if we have a, um, if there's a speed limit for the train wash. I'm going to slow down just in case. I'm going to stay at five for right now. Six.
I thought we were getting a train wash. I slowed down for a train wash. I expect to get sudsy. Come on. I expect to get so... I know the train wash on Portsmouth Direct Line is a 3 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm going to assume that 5 kilometers is probably what I want to go. But it looks like I'm not actually going to be getting any kind of train wash here, which is unfortunate. I expected a train wash. Like th This is our final stop. So, oh, this is the train wash. Okay. I don't see any sign indicating a speed limit here. So, um... Ah, the water. The water animates. Fantastic. I slowed down because I'm not sure what speed I should be going, but... The garage opened for us. I love it. <laughs> Doesn't take much to please me, does it? Looks like there's no speed limit for the train wash. I'm just going to go ahead and speed up. Just the 18, basically. So we're going to move uh, forward into the shed here. If you're coming into here at 18, you probably uh, don't want to go that fast. I don't know what the speed limit is in here yet, so I'm going to find out with you at the same time. And some of you might already know if you're watching this after playing it yourself. 18 appears to be the limit, so I'm going to go ahead and just punch myself up to 7. I'm going to get a little chippy here. Punch myself up to 7. About 3 hundredths away from the signal, I'm going to drop it down to about... Four, I think. Hello. Oh, there's a moving guy. The, guy. the guys above ground move. Underground, they don't. Can we get some brakes on, please? Thank you. get ourselves nice and close to this uh, buffer here is what I'm trying to do. So we're going to come a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, a little closer. That'll do. Almost. That's a better view. Are you kidding me? I'm within depot line 14. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I'm trying to go all the way to the buffer. Well, I'm just going to watch to see what happens here now. This is going to be fun. Thunk. Yeah, I seem to have come to a stop now. Um, why did I not complete successfully? I don't understand what I did wrong. I honestly... They wanted me to stop well before the buffer, apparently. I'm going to uh, report that. That is not right, I don't think. Okay. All right, time for take two. Let's try that again, shall we? We're cleared again for Depot 14. Uh, we're going to resist the urge to go all the way to the end of the line this time. Uh, which is my want to do to go to the end of the line, but the game does not recognize us stopping within the zone Even though the zone goes to the end of the line, which is very strange. I'm Don't know why That may change in the future uh, I mean, Now that I know the train wash speed is not actually anything less than 18 I'm just gonna go ahead and rush through in very very quick fashion while the garage opens in front of us We've been squeaky we've been squeaky washed now I'm going to start slowing down as we come in because, you know, I just don't feel safe entering a garage more than 10 kilometers an hour. I just don't. So we're going to stop about 500 of a kilometer away from the buffer this time. We're going to break there. <coughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I did... 
nothing I could do to stop that, and I didn't want to pause in the middle of a break application, so I apologize. You're going to hear me snort sneezing there. Tried to hold it in, just didn't want to work. Anyway, quick look at our train. That's good to look at the train, isn't it? There is, there's our train. There's our lovely, lovely train. Well done, you've completed this tutorial successfully. So now that we're inside the garage, the garage is closed. If we were to proceed all the way, like, I just want to review again. If we were to proceed to this point, we fail the mission. If we proceed to the end of the line, we fail the mission. But if we stop all the way back there, we're successful. Keep that in mind, kids. Uh, back to the tutorial, or the scoring screen. So there it is, uh, nothing really to do wrong there on this run. Uh, other than being illegitimately disqualified on the first run, we didn't, on of that scenario. Uh, you didn't see, by the way, because I, I excluded, I went to do the second run, I went to uh, set, I decided to stupidly try to set the reverser to forward from auto while the throttle was still in a parallel position. And needless to say, the train tried to take off while the doors were open. So uh, yeah, I got another failure as well. I didn't really enjoy that tutorial from that perspective. Uh, because I should have cleared it the first time. I should have never had that error. That was just me poke, poking around trying to figure out what you can do. And well, now I know you can't do that. So, because uh, the throttle was on. That's why. The throttle was on. Why would you be able to do that? Put the, You have to put it into off before you move into forward. Otherwise, you're going to just lurch forward. And that's what happened, I think, on the first part of the run, which I am showing you. Because... Um, now I know that that happened when I tried to go forward in the second run and the doors were open and the train went. And I'm like, why are you going? I didn't command you to go. Well, in truth, I did command you to go because I didn't move the throttle off. So that was kind of my fault. I also seem to have a um, error leaving the tunnel on my second try leaving the tunnel as well once I got past that auto fail. Um, I actually had trouble leaving the tunnel for a second because it actually didn't let me increase on shunt speed. I think I just tipped up to over 19 for a moment, and then for some reason it must have triggered an emergency brake, but the it didn't deduct points for me. I, I still have 1,000. So, um, interesting. Interesting uh, mechanics on this route. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm probably going to have a lot of fun on these scenarios, and I'm going to show you these scenarios. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of auto on them. Let's take a quick look at what the scenarios are on this route. So, I don't know what order these scenarios are supposed to be done in, but let's just take a quick look at them from top to bottom. I'll check the manual to see what order they're in in the manual, and I might just go with that order. I might just do whatever I feel like doing. I, I might do the shunting in the middle just to spice things up, but let's take a look. These are all maximum 40-minute scenarios. These are all going to be short little bites for you. You're going to get to enjoy these. I'm actually tempted to do these two back-to-back -back because they're 20 and 25, respectively, 25 and 20. These 40 ones are going to be obviously a single video, without question. So, I've kind of got an idea. I can probably do this entire route on Friday, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's what I'm kind of thinking I can do here. All five of these scenarios will be done on those four, on those four days because I can combine those other two into one uh, setup here. So let's let's do it that way. I'm going to do this for the entire next week. We're going to do this whole set of scenarios. We're going to be done this DLC, and I may come back for anything if something shows up in the workshop. I don't predict there's going to be a lot of workshop content because there's not really much else you can do. Just change the time of day. Uh, put different trains on the line to create delays, things like that. That's really all you can do. Um, but I can't see a lot of delays because it looks like it's just two straight loops around and that's all it is. Uh, you might have a delayed service in front of you. You might have to stop and wait for that to clear before you get your auto start. There can be things like that to spice things up. I'll be very curious to see what shows up in the workshop. But the scenarios that come for this route, we have a return trip from Brown Loan, Brown Loan, Broom Loan Depot. I'm going to get used to these names. A return trip from Broom Loan Depot, where you borrow brooms, apparently, around the inner circle. Then the outer circle manual mode challenge. A return trip from Broom Loan Depot around the outer circle in manual driving mode. So you're not allowed to use auto start for whatever reason. Maybe it's just broken that day. I don't know. Uh, but you can't use it that day. The outer circle service is a regular return trip from Broom Loan Depot around the outer circle. Why are they all return trips? Uh... And then the two that I'm going to probably put together, depart from Broom Loan Depot and start an inner circle service from Govan. And then uh, Shunting Shuffle, assemble a three-car train on a winter afternoon in Broom Loan Maintenance Yard. This will be the one time we get to do stuff outside and we get to enjoy some outer shots of the train as we do our shunting. So this will be the one uh, nice scenic uh, view. I'm going to try to get you some scenes at the different stations as well as we um, do these 
scenarios. Again, there's not a lot you can do. You're underground. You're not going to have any... It's not like you can go and get a shot of the train with a mountain in the background or with a nice neighborhood behind it. It's underground. None of this is underground. So I'm going to try to get you some shots around the various subway stations as we go. Uh, no guarantee this is going to be the most scenic uh, DLC we have for that reason. We're just going to get pictures of the station. And uh, I can't really show you moving passengers because the passengers aren't moving. Simple. But we may get looks at the train and see passengers uh, on the train. I may take a look at the train from time to time to show you the passengers on the train as we go. That could be interesting for uh, scenic elements. In any case, I'm not sure which of the first of these stereos is going to be the first stereo, but stay tuned for one of these tomorrow. You're going to see one of these tomorrow on Friday, and we're going to uh, have a nice quick little playlist set up when all these videos go up. So you're going to get to see that playlist. Uh, I'm going to make the playlist available on Saturday when three videos are up, and then the last two will be added to it as they release on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I think that's the best way to do this. And then I'm probably going to take Thursday off because I want to figure out what I'm doing with other content. Plus, I have some um, out-of-town commitments. For example, the day I'm recording this, I'm going to be leaving for two days after this. So I'm trying to get some of these recorded today so you can see these uh, next week and have them edited ready to go for next week. So I'll see you next time is basically the main part I want to say here. I'll see you next time for the inner circle or outer circle service. It's going to be either an inner or outer circle service. The other ones I'm going to do in the middle to um, give a little bit of uh, flavor. Even though it's a five-star difficulty, I'm probably going to finish with the four-star manual challenge because that seems like it'll be the most challenging scenario. That's what I might do. But I'm going to see what the manual says the order is. And I'll follow that for guidance. Anyway, see you next time. I'm done blabbing. See you next time for more Let's Play Train Sim Classic uh, on the Glasgow subway. We're going to have some fun with this. I'm Cyclone. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Have a wonderful day, evening, or night. If you are on the playlist, by the way, the next video starts in 3, 2, 1.